Let's start on a positive note. As far as flip phone foldable build quality is concerned, I'm not sure it gets much better than the Flip 6. Samsung has been churning out folding phones for 5 years now. Now it shows. The Z Flip 6 is sturdy, well made and almost perfect in its design save for one thing. I love that Flip 6's aluminum frame is now matte instead of glossy like it was on the Flip 5, but the flatter sides and sharper edges don't feel nearly as comfortable. I don't like the glossy frame on the Motorola Razor Plus 24, for example, but I also find its rounded edges and frame much nicer to hold. The Flip 6 isn't annoying to hold, though I do hope the more rounded design comes back next year. The Z Flip 6 also has an exceptional hinge, it moves fluidly with no resistance or creakiness. It can be propped up at almost any angle and it easily snaps open and closes shut with one hand. The hinge also more durable than ever featuring Samsung's new dual rail hinge design. The company says it has better shock distribution than past models, while the new folding edge mechanism offers better resistance to pressure and sharp objects. Combined with an IP48 rating that offers dust and water resistance, this is one of the most durable folding phones you will find. But it's not just the hints that Samsung does so well, it also expertly executes the smaller details. All of the buttons are firm and clicky. The speaker is loud and sounds surprisingly full. The fingerprint sensor is lightning fast. There are smaller details that other flip phones sometimes have to sacrifice but not here. As for colors, there are a lot the normal color this year include yellow, mint, blue and grey. Yellow is my personal favorite too. I have grown quite fond of the blue color on my review unit. If you buy the Flip 6 from Samsung's website, you get three more options peach, white and crafted black. Crafted black has a Kevlar-like texture on the back that looks cool in photos too. It feels a bit cheap in person. Also even too, I joked about it. At the beginning of the review, I do kind of love the matching colors around the cameras, it's a fun touch. We have two screens to discuss here and we will start with the inner one. It's great. It's a 6.7 inch AMOLED panel with 2640 by 1080 resolution up to 120Hz refresh rate and up to 2600 nits of peak brightness. The increased brightness is a very nice touch, but otherwise this is the same display as last year. This is one area where I am fine with the Samsung keeping things the same. The Flip 6's display is bright, colorful and sharp and it looks excellent whether I am watching YouTube or scrolling Reddit. Samsung has long been an expert in the display field and it shows once again on the Flip 6. I also have to mention that the crease is far less prominent on the Flip 6 than it was on the Flip 5. It is still there and more noticeable than the almost non-existent crease on Motorola's new Razer phones, but it's a big step in the right direction. While the Flip 5's crease feels like a canyon, the Flip 6's feel like a very small debate. That's the inner screen, what about the cover one? This is where I start complaining. Last year, the Galaxy Z Flip 5 took the teeny tiny 1.9 inch cover display on the Flip 4 and expanded it to a much larger 3.4 inch one. It was a big deal enabling helpful widgets, an on-screen keyboard and full application support. It was a commendable step forward but even in 2023, it already fell behind what Motorola offered with that year's version of the Razer Plus. So, how did Samsung improve the cover screen on the Galaxy Z Flip 6? It didn't, not at all. Just like last year, it's a 3.4 inch AMOLED panel with a 720x748 resolution and a 60Hz refresh rate. It's serviceable, but that's about it. The low resolution makes icons and text look fuzzy, the 60Hz refresh rate feels sluggish and the 3.4 inch size feels cramped by 2024 standards. You also still can't run apps on the cover screen without jumping through a half dozen hoops. 
Meanwhile, the Z Flip 6's biggest competitor, the Motorola Razor Plus 2024, kicks the living daylight out of it. For context, the Razor's cover screen is a 4 inch AMOLED panel with 1080 by 2640 resolution and up to 165Hz refresh rate. Yes, those are the cover screen specs. The Razor Plus makes the Z Flip 6 look antiquated by comparison. This is one of the areas where Samsung needed to improve the most. Instead, it took the Flip 5's cover screen, slapped it on the Flip 6 and called it a day. It's incredibly disappointing and one of the phone's biggest scenes. On a better note, the Galaxy Z Flip 6's camera are good, they aren't amazing, but the two main sensors are capable and reliable. If you want a phone that can consistently capture great images, you will be happy here. The star of the show is a 50MP primary camera, the same one you get on the Galaxy S24 and S24 Plus. It's joined by a 12MP ultrawide camera with a 123 degree field of view plus a 10MP selfie camera at the top of the inner display. Overall, photos captured by Z Flip 6 look nice, images are sharp and detailed and often written bright, pleasing colors. The jump to a 50MP primary camera over the 12MP camera on the Z Flip 5 is particularly handy. Not only do a standard 1x photos look sharper, but digital zoom on the Flip 6 is also very usable. Samsung says 2x photos are optical quality zoom and I tend to agree. Even jumping to 4x and 10x, I don't hate the results. It certainly doesn't make up for the lack of a dedicated telephoto camera, but it makes the camera system more versatile than last year. The 12 megapixel ultra wide camera is good too. There is some slight distortion at the edges, but the 123 degree field of view allows you to capture a lot more in the frame. Photos also have a decent amount of detail despite the lower 12 megapixel resolution and colors are very similar to photos taken with the main camera. Like previous Samsung phones, the Z Flip 6 still struggles a bit with moving subjects. It can also be a little much more with vibrant colors at times, particularly with bright blue skies. Similar to the Flip 5, the Flip 6 has a good camera system, if not a spectacular one. Here are some camera samples of the Galaxy Z Flip 6. Take a look inside the Galaxy Z Flip 6 and you will find a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset, the exact same one you get on the Galaxy S24 and S24 Ultra. It also comes equipped with 12GB of RAM and 256GB or 512GB of storage, a welcome increase from the 8GB of RAM on the Flip 5. As expected, the Galaxy Z Flip 6 performs exceptionally. It is worth mentioning that the Z Flip 6 is the first Z Flip smartphone with a vapor chamber, specifically one that's 50% larger than the vapor chamber used in the Galaxy S23 Ultra. This is supposed to keep the Z Flip 6 much cooler when under pressure compared to past models and it seems to work well. I have noticed the top part of the phone warm up once and that was only after almost an hour of streaming a 4K YouTube video while also running other apps on the phone. Throughout normal use, the Flip 6 stays as cool as a cucumber. This all puts the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6 in an awkward position. If you have a much older Z Flip and you are dead set on getting the newest model, you won't have a bad time with the Flip 6 at all. Hell, I've had a great time using it, but I also don't think it should be at the top of your shopping list. If you want a good Samsung foldable, you can save yourself hundreds of dollars and buying a Galaxy Z Flip 5 and really not miss out on much at all. Alternatively, if you can escape Team Samsung, this year's Razor Plus kicks the Flip 6's butt in more ways than one and costs $100 less. It's not that Samsung made a bad phone with the Z Flip 6, it just made a lazy one.